my review of Trick Droid on the AT&T HTC One. Now, there are a lot of cool features about this ROM and a lot of missing features about this ROM. So let's go ahead and get started. So first off, something that I really enjoy from the, the Sense4 Plus days is the little app shortcuts that you can add on the side. Now, these only take up three app spaces. So you notice how the HTC Sense launcher is a four by four. Well, now you can have five, so kind of like five, it's still four, but you can have the four apps and then the widget on top. So if we go into settings, we are running on Android 4.2.2, but something that's missing from this build of Android 4.2.2 is the, if we go up under personalize, go into lock screen, you do not have lock screen widgets, which I think is kind of sad. But I mean, it's not that bad. I also probably could have showed you guys how to add those. Um, what you do is long press on the screen, and it's the first widget, the app and shortcut. If you just go ahead and drag and drop, you get to choose the four apps that you want. Forgot to mention that, I'm sorry. But let's go back into settings and turn Wi Fi off too, if that works. But <laughs> let's go under Trick Droid. Now, this isn't Viper ROM. This isn't this doesn't have like the full blowout features of Viper ROM. But let's go under status bar. So you notice you have the slide brightness where you can slide your finger across to turn up the brightness. You can enable the horizontal quick settings, which you see I don't have them enabled right now, but go ahead and check those on. So you can have those and you can also have these, which I think is kind of weird. I mean if you want to, I guess you can have those on. But it's got a battery. You can choose the battery textile, battery icon. See, I just I chose the AOSP because I kind of like the blue. So I hope that's a better shot of the battery icon. Um, let me try out the circle. So that's pretty nice. Let's, I'm just going to go back because I like the AOSP style. But you can play around with these and you can see which battery icons that you like the best. All right, and also you can have the MyUI battery bar, which is, I don't, you can't probably can't see that. I don't know. It's like a little battery bar that goes across the top of your phone. I'm going to disable that because I don't really use it because I have the percentage. Um, now you can choose the extended quick settings color. So you see I just have it stock where it's not really any color. They're just white. But um, let's go to blue. Can we choose blue? New color. So we're going to let that reset. I'm going to pull these down and it didn't change anything. That works, right? <laughs> so let's go to clock. Now you can choose this to be center or you can put it back normal which is over there or you can just hide it completely. And if you don't want the AM PM you can also choose the color and the header clock. Pull this down. Is that little clock right there of course. You can show or hide that. It's actually showing so I don't know why it's hidden. That's kind of weird because it was showing but it said hidden. Hide. Hid. Words. And also you can hide the AM PM there and you can also choose that clock color. Now let's go back. We can choose which icons we want to show. So if you don't want to show, say, data, you don't have to show that, which is weird. Not sure why it's checked. Let's go back. HTC Sense is the launcher. So when you click on the clock app, you can have it where it takes you to a custom app instead of just, you know, the stock behavior of it. Now buttons, volume wake up, which is pretty nice because the power button on mine, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's kind of recessed a little bit. So it's kind of hard to press. Oops, let's go back. Let's go to miscellaneous. And you can choose different recent apps. I kind of like the um, Android 4.1 because, I don't know, it's just easier to swipe the apps away and stuff like that. And I also increased my Wi-Fi scan interval so that it didn't really use that much battery. Now, Play Store billing, I'm on T-Mobile. Well, this phone's actually on AT&T, but I have to use my T-Mobile SIM card. And it's I just keep that as stock. And then you can choose your advanced power menu settings, which is, of course, when you long press. So you see those. I have screenshot checked, sound, and advanced power menu options, which is like the hot reboot and stuff like that. So you can just disable some of these if you don't want them. But they're kind of nice, so I choose to just leave them there. And go back. And everything else is pretty much stock HTC Sense 5. Um, I'm not really noticing anything different besides the toggles we do have a timeout media output screenshot comes stock um yeah but not the order is kind of different i'm noticing but let me pull in my i got my droid dna because i just kind of want to show you guys the widget on the lock screen so i'm i'm kind of disappointed that you know 
We don't have this on the HTC One, but that is that. So, and also I have just a few random shortcuts. I have two cameras because I don't know. It's just there. But it doesn't really come with any custom apps, at least not out of my pre-installed apps. But I'm not sure why it's unable to connect. Let's go to battery. Let's go to power. And you see I'm at 30% after one day, nine hours. I use this mostly for YouTube. So if we go to usage, see Netflix and YouTube are up there. Because this does have front-facing speakers. But screen on time is bare minimum. Not really much going on there. And the battery is already 30%. So the battery life, I guess, if you don't use your phone not much at all. Like, it'll last you through a day. But, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't really think there's anything else to cover if I missed anything. Um, for speed-wise, it's, it's HTC Sense 5 on HTC One. It's not slow. <laughs> so, yeah, it's fast. It's still Sense 5. It's incredibly fast. No lag whatsoever. I still play all my games and it doesn't lag. So let's go ahead and open up Need for Speed. That's a game. Application is not authorized. Wow, you have to have Wi-Fi on. Just my Wi-Fi is on. Turn Wi-Fi off. Go to menu. So my Wi-Fi was not on. So it showed that it was on. What is? Let's try this again. So that's, I don't really like how you have to have internet just to use Need for Speed, that's kind of disappointing. But you see no lag at all, it's there, it's loading up just fine. But if you guys like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, it helps me out a lot, more than you know actually. And if you guys, if I missed anything, let me know. Like, I thought I covered everything, but I don't want to live wallpaper, let me know. But if I did miss anything, just let me know, and I'll make another video, or I'll just let you know in the comments below if you want to know anything about it. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.